This is Twit. Jordan in Glendale, California. Hi, Jordan. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Um, I work for a small company of about 30 people, of which I'm in charge of the video department. And I have a six terabyte uh, G RAID drive that I call my mothership, where I store all of the video. And for the people that edit um, under me, they have one terabyte drives, and I give them footage for their projects. I'm having a hard time keeping track of <laughs> what's where. Yeah, I uh, bet. <laughs> as you can imagine. So, and, wait a minute. They come to you, and you have your six terabyte uh, uh, RAID array or whatever it is. And yeah. then they say, I want some footage. And you have some software, I guess, that you say... No. You do this by hand. You copy. You drag. You put in. A, put the terabyte drive in the. Uh, well, you probably have one of those drive toasters, those ejectable drive bays, right? Something no, like we're that. not even. Uh, not there. even that good, huh? I have a little organization system with the files, so I pick which client Just I want drag, them to work on. Drag them and over. I get, like the first file, and yeah, they have everything. So uh, what I what I'd like to do is what the graphic designers at my work do, which is store everything you know, in the cloud, and then they can download it, and it's safe up there. But uh, obviously that's difficult for something as large as video. So, uh, and, you know, the the owner of the company is looking to me for answers on what to do because I told her this is a problem, but I don't have a solution. Microsoft uh, bought a company uh, called, I think it was Expression Media, and uh, it was designed for, I think, still photography, but I believe it also did video. It, uh, it's uh, Microsoft Expression, and they've now changed it into Expression Blend. I don't even know what that is, an Expression Web. I would, you know, this was the, the program people were using to keep track of media files. Uh, my friend, you know, I have a good friend, Peter Krogh, in fact, he's coming to town uh, and, and I'll ask him when he comes to town. But he wrote the book, the Digital Asset Management book, or the DAM, D-A-M book. And he's an expert uh, photographer who has really, you know, dealt directly with these issues of how do you, as you imagine, it's the same problem with video as photography. How do you manage these thousands of files, some of them online, some of them offline, some of them near line? How do you find them, get them, move them around, get them to where you want? Right. Uh, exactly. I'm going to look those up. That sounds good. Because my main problem is um, how do I – we work from home, and I'm having to meet the other people to trade footage. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how I can let them work off the – let's say I do a video shoot. I have the footage. How do I get it to them without sending them 60 gigabytes over the weekend in an email? That's even more complicated. So That's they're they're not even on site now. You've got to get this stuff to them. So ideally, what you would have is somewhere you'd. St I know it's expensive, but somewhere you'd store this six terabytes of video online, and then you could just send them pointers. You wouldn't have to move files around. You just say, "Hey, you need this, 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 and this." Now is, we have a little bit of a budget, so I'm looking for you know the the best way to do this. Is there a way for them to edit? through uh, where I stored on the cloud with yeah. having to download the footage Oh, yeah. First. Yeah, there are online uh, editing what programs as well. Well, um, I know, uh, you know, I know people who work on television shows have got to, there's got to be a way for this. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not an expert it on it. I, um, this is a really interesting uh, question. I think it's a similar problem for a lot of people with photos so so it's i think yeah it's still certainly the fi the problem is the video of course the file sizes are, sizes are much much larger exactly um, you know you can uh, thanks to the uh, the chromebook um there is a brisk market in chrome extensions and there are in fact video editors that will work inside of chrome like we video is the one i know of w e v i d e o i don't know if it's good enough for for professional use i do uh, l last year we did about 400 videos it might so, be i mean yeah. i think the key is you're going to store your data online and then you're going to say here are the assets you need for your video and yeah. give them a link to those assets in we video which is we video is kind of amazing it gives you a you know it uses google drive so you'd have to buy enough storage on google drive for all of that stuff right okay and then, um, and then WeVideo lets you, just like, you know, file, uh, just like um, 
uh, Final Cut, it lets you create a project, bring in assets, edit the assets online, and all of that stuff. That seems to me to be a consumer solution. I'm going to look and see. Padre uh, SJ in our chat room says there's a program called Digital Fountain. <laughs> mm, he, he's an expert in enterprise stuff. He does our This Week in Enterprise Technology. Um, they Experts in broadcast and real-time data transport. So that's, yeah, and they're owned by Qualcomm. So, oh, okay. so uh, that's another one you might want to look at. That's going to be more of an enterprise solution. Chatroom and I kind of talking about this, this interesting issue. It's really not a consumer issue. But uh, what if you have big files and you got to move them around, video files, you got to make not only keep track of the assets, but you've got to get them to your editors all over the world. Apparently, James Cameron, when he made Avatar, used this digital fountain technology we mentioned. Uh, as, if you think about it, uh, most Hollywood movies these days have a huge amount of computer-generated graphics. Uh, and those graphics are often not done in the U.S. Ireland, uh, uh, Africa, all over the world, right? So uh, you get these people creating these graphics. They need to transport these files. They're giant, really big, big, big files. Let the director see them. So maybe you need to have a streaming kind of low-quality version so the director can give you some input. Move them around. Apparently, I mean, in Avatar, was half the movie was generated by the computer. More probably. So uh, there's there's one solution. Uh, although uh, we have many listeners, as I mentioned, in Hollywood, and some of them have told me, you know, we still mail hard drives. <laughs> you just wrap a hard drive in bubble wrap and ship it. If if you think about bandwidth, I think it was Reed Hastings at Netflix who said he had this insight when he first started Netflix. He was still a graduate student in college. And his professor asked an interesting question. Which has more bandwidth? A fiber optic cable from San Francisco to New York or a truck carrying 5,000 hard drives? <laughs> if you think about it, the truck might have more bandwidth. It could certainly, you know, maybe it's going to take a longer time, but it can transport an awful lot of data, uh, you know. So sometimes shipping a drive is, is literally the fastest way to move data. Reed Hastings thought about that and he said, you know, maybe the best way to rent movies would be by mail, mailing them the DVD. If we can get them the DVD in the next day or two, that might be faster than downloading it. Maybe. Maybe. Bandwidth might not be the right term. Throughput, uh, maybe that, maybe you're right. Uh, chat room, US Dewiz says throughput, not bandwidth. Yeah, same idea. How much data can you transport and how fast can you do it?